Hi guys, it is an unbelievably, spectacularly gorgeous day here in the end times in paradise over this over-the-top, beautiful spring day, Saturday, April 8, 2017. And so this is the second time your clueless moron Luddite is starting his weekly clueless moron roundup rant. The whole time I was getting this rant together, apparently my battery charger was unplugged. Anyway, maybe the second time is a charm for me to go on the mainstream media to see how this planet's <coughs> collective IQ is heading directly down the toilet on this beautiful day in the end times. And guys, I sheepishly must admit, I lied to you, I think it was just yesterday, I lied to you about how I was not going to get into the Donald Trump, war, the war criminal Donald Trump bombing Syria. But of course, since that was possibly the single number one biggest act of clue, clueless moronity, in the year 2017, obviously, I cannot do a clueless fucking moron roundup rant without diving into Donald Trump uh, attacking Syria. Anyway, little dog, you're going to have to get down while I dive into this. I don't know what to do with my, 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 uh, we're so fuck sign is blowing away here in the wind in the end times. I, anyway, <laughs> all right, let's dive right into it. Just, just in case you're living under a rock, you have not heard the number one clueless moron story of 2017. Donald Trump launches military strikes on Syria. So let's hear some of the, uh, the, the fallout from this story. How about this uh, story? After Syria strikes, U.S. and Russia spiral into confrontation. So I don't really know who the clueless fucking moron in this story is, other than Donald Trump, of course. It would be anybody and... Can't, I won't name names here. Any clueless fucking moron voting for Donald Trump, thinking that Donald Trump was going to heal relations between the U.S. and Russia, I hope you have about a dozen eggs on your face right now, you clueless fucking morons out there thinking that, that Donald Trump was going to defuse tensions uh, with Russia. Take it away, Associated Press. After President Donald Trump's election victory, the U.S. and Russia appeared headed toward their smoothest ties in decades. Not anymore. As Donald Trump trumps Hillary Clinton, that warmongering bitch and uh, bringing us closer than ever to war with Russia. I honestly don't think Hillary Clinton could have pulled this one off as quick as Donald uh, Trump. But there is somebody cheering on Donald Trump. How about Benjamin Netanyahu welcomes U.S. attack on Syria? There you go. So Donald Trump does have some supporters on the planet. Now, uh, obviously, this story, uh, Chris Hedges could not wait until Monday uh, to come out with his rant. We have a special edition rant by Chris Hedges uh, from Truth Dig titled The Pandora's box of war, where uh, Chris Hedges 
uh, for any clueless moron who doesn't understand this, this is uh, this is the opening paragraph where where Chris is just saying that this one is just the latest example, the latest example. Uh, of U.S. policy in the Middle East, it makes no goddamn difference. Donald Trump, Hillary Clinton, Barack Obama, Baby Bush, Daddy Bush, Bill Clinton, Ronald Reagan, this is the latest chapter where we have, quote, created new failed states and lawless enclaves where vacuums are filled by the jihadist forces we sought to defeat. We have wasted a staggering $4.79 trillion on death, destruction, and folly as our nation is increasingly impoverished and climate change threatens us all with extinction. The arms manufacturers who have a vested interest in perpetuating these debacles will work to make a few trillion dollars more before this act of collective imperial suicide comes to a humiliating end. Thank you very much much Chris Hedges for uh, talking about the clueless moron uh, U.S. military policy in the Middle East, uh, you know, making millions of jihadist uh, and radicalized Muslims, the number one their reason they're radicalizing is because of stunts like this. Okay, I'm going to come back to Al Gore in a minute. Um, let's see, before, as long as we're talking about warmongers, how many times do I have to say it? Uh, do not look to, towards the Middle East for the mushroom clouds. Look the other direction, I guess, look towards Asia. Look towards the South China Sea for the big mushroom cloud and India and Pakistan for the little one. Here is, what is the, this madman over there in the Philippines, Duterte, the, the version of Trump over in the Philippines? Here we go. Duterte orders Philippine troops to South China Sea. There you go. Philippine President Rodrigo Duterte has ordered troops to deploy on unoccupied South China Sea islands, boosting the military presence on remote reefs claimed by Manila in a move that could provoke rival claimants, including China. Yes, uh, quoting this madman, quote, it looks like everybody is making a grab for the islands there, so we better live on those that are still vacant. That's the big mushroom cloud, and so what is that madman over there in India? Narendra Modi, what is he up to this week while Trump is bombing Syria with Benjamin Netanyahu cheering on, Duterte is moving in to the uh, South China Sea claimed by China over there in India, we have Narendra Modi inking weapons deal worth nearly two billion dollars with guess who? How about Benjamin Netanyahu? India will buy nearly 
two billion dollars worth of weapons technology from Israel in what is being described as, quote, the largest defense contract ever signed by the military exporting giant. Yes. Uh, all right, as I say, I could do a, a rant on any of this, but I've got to uh, move ahead. While all of this is going on, what is Al Gore? Uh, Al Gore, what is he now? Al Gore is the founder and chairman of the Climate Reality Project. So what is the, uh, the chairman of the Climate Reality Project have on his mind? Obviously not Syria, but uh, about uh, Donald Trump declaring war on this planet's climate. And this is Al Gore. Uh, I have hope we are going to win this. We are going to prevail. No matter how discouraging the president's executive orders may be, we must, we can, and we will solve the climate crisis. Okay, let's see, where can we go from Al Gore? Uh, message of hope. Okay, let's go over there to China. Uh, I'll be talking about both of these stories again on Monday. I just thought they were worth mentioning in a clueless fucking moron roundup rant. <laughs> Beijing struggles to get its residents to declare war on trash. China's garbage-strewn capital of Beijing has promised to boost spending to banish growing mountains of garbage, but is struggling to persuade its upwardly mobile residents to sort their trash. So Beijing, this one city, is producing 8.7 million tons of household waste last year, almost double that of a decade earlier, and residents deride its sprawling landfills it's as a seventh ring road. So right now, Beijing, with a population of 22 million, producing 8.7 million tons of garbage. So what do they plan to do? With that news, China plans to build a new city nearly three times the size of New York. It's from The Guardian. Uh, I wish you could see this picture of a traffic jam already. Uh, a hitherto anonymous region near China's smog-choked capital has been overrun by house buyers after Beijing unveiled historic plans to build a city there in a bid to slash pollution and congestion. There you go. Okay. All right. I've already mentioned this one a couple of times about, well, a little backstory. These are these goddamn planet eaters called Hill Corp 
corporation up there in offshore Alaska in this federally protected beluga whale sanctuary. You know, they've already had an underwater uh, gas leak uh, going on since December, which they still haven't fixed. And so about 10 days ago, they, uh, a, an oil leak was discovered in one of their pipelines next to the leaking gas pipeline offshore. First, the planet eaters were claiming that 10 gallons of oil spilled out of the pipeline before uh, it leaked. And now, you would think that they were admitting that it was a little bit more than 10 gallons. No, pipeline owner now says Alaska oil spill was less than three gallons. And so this, this uh, news, unadulterated horseshit, comes out, and then the very next day, oil company finds yet another problem in Alaska marine pipelines. <clears throat> A petroleum company already under investigation for leaks in two of its underwater pipelines in Alaska's Cook Inlet confirmed Friday it has an issue with a third. Uh, da, da, da. Moving on, let's go uh, look at what the ladies are up to. Uh, we're going to do uh, a, a ladies only clueless fucking moron roundup rant. And of course, no clueless moron roundup rant about women would be complete without the star. Hillary Clinton, quote, I don't think I will look into ever running for office again. All right. Okay. But speaking of clueless fucking bitches buying their way into office for, what was it, about $5 billion, we see how the U.S. taxpayers are getting ready to spend another $7.8 million on additional security cost for Betsy DeVos. Uh, government officials said Friday that Education Secretary Betsy DeVos requires additional security detail due to threats to her safety and that it may cost taxpayers up to $7.8 million in extra security. There you go. But what is, we just talked about the former first lady, what is going on uh, with that stuck up, clueless fucking bitch, M Melania Trump? Here you go. This is from, I'm not making this up, this is from Footwear News. There really is a mainstream media outlet called Footwear News. And they're bringing us one of the top 100 stories on the planet, according to the editors of Yahoo News. Melania Trump shortened her $5,500 red dress to host China's first lady. Melania Trump took things up a notch on Thursday, many inches up. Da, da, da. Moving on from Melania Trump's Beaver Show to who is this? I don't know. 
some some uh, girl working, she will never get her college education because college student dies after choking at a pancake eating contest. Uh, this is 20-year-old Caitlin Nelson uh, from Clark, New Jersey. Uh, anyway, one more reason not to get into a pancake eating contest. Now this guy's, you, you tell me what this is all about. This was not published on April 1st. This was published uh, from uh, a newspaper, some from Fresno. This is the Fresno newspaper. Uh, first posted this story on April 4th and then updated it on April 6th after this clueless bitch was identified. Uh, and, and, and I'm going to read this verbatim. And, and you tell me, is this fake news? Is this an April Fool story? Anyway, woman found wet and mostly naked saying she is a mermaid has been identified but they're they're not uh, the, she was a 33 year old woman from the state of Virginia they're leaving her name out of this story uh, after they identified the woman who was found Tuesday morning walking down a road wet and almost naked claiming to be a mermaid named Joanna. Joanna the mermaid is five feet four inches tall, weighs 150 pounds, <laughs> and has webbed feet. This, this, it, this is not me joking, guys. Right here, according to the Fresno newspaper, the mermaid Joanna has webbed feet. Quoting neighbor Karen Renwick about the incident in her neighborhood, quote, There are some strange things that happen up here. We are in the mountains. All right. But uh, this woman almost became a mermaid uh, as woman falls off California's highest bridge while taking a selfie. And miraculously, this clueless bitch did not die. Uh, she is in the hospital after falling 60 feet. Uh, the unnamed woman was posing on Forest Hill Bridge with friends taking a selfie when she fell off the bridge 60 feet. Uh, any, anyway, uh, I think we get it. Let's see, but this next girl did not have it so lucky. Girl fatally struck by train while trying to retrieve her phone that fell on the tracks. A 13-year-old girl was struck and killed by an oncoming train in New York while trying to retrieve her cell phone from the tracks on Sunday afternoon. Now, again, that's, anybody who thinks cell phone morons are just uh, women or 13-year-old girls, let, let's let the men. Did not, wasn't it last week? What did the guy, how did he kill himself charging, uh, oh, in the bathtub. Last week I was reporting this guy electrocuting himself in his own bathtub trying to charge his smartphone. This guy a little bit luckier. Man 
nearly electrocuted while lying in bed with iPhone. Quote, it was God who saved my life. This is Wiley Day, an Alabama man is speaking out about the possible dangers of charging your cell phone near your bed after he was nearly electrocuted last week while sleeping. But of course, the, the, the big cell phone news uh, out there that every clueless moron wants to read is the biggest iPhone 8 leak yet offers several surprising new details. <clears throat> Apple's iPhone 8 is going to bring the massive redesign that its fans, its clueless fucking moron fans, have been asking for ever since the iPhone 6 came out. The handset is tipped to feature an all-glass front similar to the Galaxy S8. The home button will be gone, but the fingerprint sensor should be embedded in the new OLED screen. Yes. Anyway, uh, I've heard enough. Let's move on. Let's get back to the girls. Cuban biologist raises two chimpanzees in her Havana apartment. Over the last year, Ada and Anuma have broken Marta Yanez's television and computer chewed her telephone to pieces and ruined much of her furniture, but she has forgiven them every transgression. It's just hard to stay angry at a baby chimpanzee when it clambers up your leg into your arms and plants a kiss on your cheek in a plea for forgiveness. Da, da, da. So I'll guess for that story when the kiss on the cheek in a few months will be this clueless moron biologist getting her face chewed off. Who is the mom of the week? I don't have a name for you uh, in this story, unfortunately. <clears throat> The mother of an infant found abandoned in a Washington state neighborhood has been booked into jail after admitting to abandoning her baby after doing drugs and feeling paranoid. Okay, well, I guess I should have put this one... Uh, talking about clueless moron selfie addicts. Many layers of clueless morons in this story. Indonesia's selfie monkey threatened by hunger for its meat. This crested black macaque shot to fame the crested black macaque shot to fame when one of the monkeys snapped grinning selfies and became embroiled in a U.S. court battle, but the tussle over copyright issues is the least of the rare animals' worries. In a remote corner of their native Indonesia, the monkeys face a far greater threat than cell phones. They are aggressively hunted by humans to be eaten. From monkeys being eaten in Indonesia 
to uh, rhinos being slaughtered in South Africa. This has been an ongoing one, but gee, no shit, Sherlock. How has this finally played out? South Africa Constitutional Court lifts ban on domestic trade in rhino horn. Uh, South Africa's Constitutional Court rejected a plea by the country's Department of Environmental Affairs to keep a ban on the domestic sale of rhino horn. The court's ruling now makes trading rhino horn legal in the country. I'll let you draw your own conclusions. Okay. Let's look. We've looked at what Donald Trump, what are, what are some Donald Trump supporters up to? Mexican man whose wife voted for Trump is deported back to Mexico. Quote, they suddenly told me it was time to go. A Mexican man whose American wife voted for Donald Trump has been deported back to Mexico after decades spent living in the U.S. This is Roberto Berstein, who lived with his wife Helen and his four American-born children in Indiana, uh, is back with his family in Juarez, Mexico. There you go. The deport this despite his wife's belief that Trump's immigration crackdown would only be on who Trump referred to on the campaign trail as, quote, bad hombres. Okay, what's going on in the car news this week? Can Hennessy's 1,000 horsepower Exorcist Camaro send Dodge's demon back to hell? I'll let you answer that question for yourself from car morons to cute baby stories. I, I have no clue what the last word in this headline means. If anybody is still listening to this rant, let me know what this means. This baby eating a 12 pack of Taco Bell is goals. G-O-A-L-S. I have no clue what that means. Have you ever contemplated ordering a dozen self soft shell tacos and destroying them by yourself in one sitting? No? Just us? Well, one tidy tiny toddler beat us to the punch in an adorable series of photos recently posted to Facebook by Julia Marie Aurelio as during the amazing shoot one-year-old Delta Rose Phillips celebrated her birthday by stuffing her face with cheese-filled flour tortillas. Isn't that adorable? It's just so adorable to have this one-year-old little baby stuffing 12 Taco Bell tacos into her fat, fucking, clueless, moron, little one-year-old face as the mainstream media hands off a free commercial to Taco Bell. Two more stories. <clears throat> Man 
ransack store after his credit card was declined for 75 cent bag of M&Ms. And, and, and guys, I don't blame the guy here. I, I would have done the same goddamn thing. And you know, when you need a bag of M&Ms in the middle of the night, and all you got is a damn credit card to buy them, and, and that 7-Eleven machine refuses your credit card, and, and you're stoned, and you got the munchies, and it's 2 o'clock in the morning, I'd ransack the fucking store, too. You go, brother. A California 7-Eleven customer flew into a rage after his credit card was declined while making a 75-cent purchase. Uh, this is in Santa Ana uh, Police. Uh, yes. Quote, In a fit of anger, the suspect struck the cashier in the head, pushed one cash register and printer to the floor, threw bananas at the other cashier, and pushed the other register off the counter. This is the uh, cop, based on his actions over a 75 cent bag of M&Ms, I'm not sure what his reaction would be to something that's really serious. Again, that is really serious. Now we're going to wind up here with International Business Times. International Business Times. Uh, showing up in one of the top 100 stories on the planet. To wrap up this week's Clueless Moron Roundup rant. <clears throat> Chloe goes on the run on the young and the restless. I am quite sure the readers of International Business Times are hanging on the edges of their seat for this story. She was forced to come clean with the truth about what she did to Adam, and now Chloe is on the run in an attempt to escape the consequences on the Friday episode of The Young and the Restless. After knocking Chelsea out with a lamp, following her confession that she killed her best friend's husband, Chloe went on the run. And now, uh, the groom she left behind, Kevin, and the priest will be left to try and revive the other woman. Thank you, International Business Times and Yahoo News for bringing us that story. Anyway, I'm going to wrap up this week's Clueless Moron Roundup rant and head out into this absolutely gorgeous day here in the end times to plant two cherry trees to survive the collapse of global industrial civilization. Bye, guys.